places, so many roads you can go the wrong way. The changing city, the city of our fathers, but we've still got to go a long way. Look how far we've come, building hopes and dreams like everyone. Look how far we've come. Look how far we've come, building. Standing here, as the veteran reporter Fife Robertson used to say, on what was once the Parkhead Forge, one of the largest steel forges in the whole of Europe, employing thousands of people. It's actually quite sad to stand here on what was once such a huge part of the industrial wealth of the city. For a while after its closure, the East End seemed to die a wee bit, like many other areas in the city, where the traditional industries like shipbuilding and steel began to disappear. But in true Glaswegian fashion, we've picked ourselves up, dusted ourselves off and tried to do something about it. This site, for instance, is about to become a massive leisure and shopping complex for the East End. Not an answer to all the ills of this area or the city, but it's a start. The city's rapid population decline in the 1970s has now virtually halted, brought about by a variety of initiatives undertaken by public agencies which have changed the environment and the image of the city. Many inner city areas, notably in the East End and Mary Hill, have seen the traditional tenements improved and cleaned up, and new housing and leisure facilities have sprung up on once derelict tracts of land. In your life, there are so many choices, so many roads you can go the wrong way. Changing city, the city of our fathers, but we've still got to go a long way. Look how far we've come. Similarly, in the city center, old buildings have had their faces washed, new offices have been erected, and the main shopping streets pedestrianized, all greatly improving the environment. These activities, coupled with the authorities' promotion of cultural and tourist facilities, have served to transform the city's image to outsiders and reawakened in Glaswegians a sense of confidence and pride. Many parts of the city have been revitalized with the help and effort of the local residents and in other areas where improvement has yet to take place. The people are working hard to get change. All over the city, there are flourishing groups of community councils set up to protect the interests of their district. But how many people know about them? We asked Glaswegians at random whether they had heard of community councils. No, I don't know of any in one area, actually. Really? Well, I don't know about the details of what they get involved in, but I know that they exist, yeah. Well, oh. I've, I've heard of them before, but that's, that's about it, you know. That's it. Well, just to help the commu community, I would think. It seems should like be quite a good idea. Yeah. Well, one or two things I've heard that they're, they're dealing the uh, drug things and uh, that, that type of thing, but apart from that... Uh-huh. Well, I've got a vested interest because my professional job is to circulate information to young people throughout Strathclyde. And so part of that's been trying to encourage young people to join community councils. So by sheer chance, she met somebody in the station who knows a lot about community councils and has done a lot of, spent a lot of time encouraging people to join them. But what is it? What does it do? What, what's, what's its purpose? What happens is that it gives the local uh, uh, agencies and nominated bodies to report on what's happening in their areas. And if there are any problems with the neighbours, the councillors can 
um, find out ways of dealing with it. But uh, Dali Street Playgroup, um, how we are involved is um, we let the council, know, the community council, know what's happening. Uh, for example, uh, we are in the process of moving to a new site mm -hmm. as we are getting a new building and it gives us a, an opportunity to let everyone know if there are any problems and yeah. if they are, if, how they can help us. Like each district has their own each sort of council, district, yes, yes, and they've got so some. Got I think that's an excellent idea. idea. Oh, yes, I do. Community councils throughout Glasgow are involved in organising a wide range of projects and campaigns. From the beginning, we were involved with the, the external improvements in houses, uh, we've gone on to environmental. Uh, as you can see, this place round about here, we've got we port a cabin after a struggle, um, <laughs> a long struggle. Uh, our, our pride and joy, uh, that was actually done through the, G, the GCVS, uh -huh. that they came out and done that. And uh, there's so many different grants come from, uh -huh. and for a lay person like myself, I mean, I just put out my hand and take whatever I'm given. Uh -huh. But community councils themselves are funded through uh, the district. We get three hundred pounds uh, for to help with stationery, going to going to meetings, things like that. But our activity centre is urban aid funded, yeah. and Rock Hill has the unique a uh, position of being the only community council. Uh, well, the first community council in Britain to have its own paid community council development officer, and that really has helped us no end. Yes, this is an MSC scheme, uh, a cleaning project, Craig and cleaning project where we employ some local people to clean closes for pensioners, disabled people, elderly people. Um, it's been going now for about 18 months and it creates local employment. Uh. Why did you start the scheme? I mean, what were the reasons for it? Well, the, the first reason was I found there was money available. Basically, that was the first reason. Uh, and the unemployment here is about 62%. So, I mean, that was enough for me to start um, the job going. Well, we've got a, about at least 12 projects uh -huh. that I can name off the top of my head, like the audiovisual workshop We've got the camera club. Uh -huh. We've also got a garden equipment project where people can come in and hire garden tools. Good. And we're now currently involved in Heatwise. I could go on, but that, I think that's <laughs> enough to keep you going. And how many of the local people actually are involved in all of these? You get? Well, I, think, I think the entire community gets itself involved here from time to time through things like uh, festivals and galas. And of course, with the highest turnout of voters in the whole of Glasgow, and you can't ask for better than that. You can't ask you know? for more than that, would you know? And do you think that the presence, obviously, of this community council really assists the people in this area? I mean, is it is it meant there is a better community spirit in the area now? Well, I would I would obviously say that. Yeah. But uh, I'll put it this way to you: that uh, when we uh, established ourselves in 1975, uh -huh. we were the only organisation in Cork. There was no other organisations. And every organisation in Cork Hill we've got now, and we've got tenants associations, we've got neighbourhood play schemes, neighbourhood hall, single parents, link up groups. Every one of these groups were born out of the community council. Uh -huh. So, I mean, we can, we're almost convinced that we have really created a spirit in Cork Hill that was never there uh -huh. before. Maybe way back in the, 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 the 20s or 30s when it was the old railway village. But in between all that time, there was never any other organisations. So the community council actually is the organisation that's created that new spirit in the community. Uh -huh. The idea of these premises was to try and create a one-door approach uh, uh, for district council services to the community. Uh, we have involved uh, home health officers and we also have the housing supervisor who comes here every Wednesday from roughly about half past ten to twelve o'clock and that gives people a chance because they uh, a housing, council housing is one of the most important things within our area. Now, I have another little problem if you have time, uh, oh, Mr. No Norman. Problem, yeah. um, there's a lady who lives here, she's 82 and she's deaf, and at the moment she's sort of losing her sight. And the daughter phoned me and said she would like her mother, if she could get her mother up beside her to live. I she's, think it's the Annie's Land area. She's wanting a, a transfer from this area to Annie's Land? Yes. The old woman's 80? Yes. Uh, is she I, housebound or...? No, she's not housebound. Now, you, you say that uh, her daughter's dealing with her affairs? Yes, although, as the daughter explained to me, it's hard on her because she, the daughter works every day and she comes from Annie's Land. Well, 
If She's going to try and see the district council on Saturday morning in Nether Craigs. Yeah. What I could do, I could give you my phone number if you want to relay it to the oh. daughter. Yeah. She could phone me and we could make some arrangement to get the application form filled in. That would even be better. Actually, the daughter no dealing direct with right. you. Well, I'll yeah. give you the phone number then. And That's she can contact me direct. That would be okay. great. Right. That would be right. great. Many successful projects emerged over the years, Tory Glen being one of the community councils who have pioneered community transport. Well, this is our minibus, which uh -huh. we have been involved in for three years, yes. and it's been a great asset to the community and to the groups who have registered with us. And we have found that it's been very beneficial for the young and the old, and it's been able to take them about for the various outings that they want to go to. Uh -huh. And so you would think that you're, you said earlier to me that you were wanting another one. Yes, we're trying to fundraise and we hope to obtain a grant from the Strathclyde region that will be able to uh -huh. purchase one more adapted for the handicapped, which we'll be able to put into use because we have so many groups registered with us that we find the bus has been overworked uh -huh. and we just can't cope with the amount of registered groups within the community. Great. Now, can you tell us a bit about the other activities or projects? Well, we have another with? community involvement, which is the newspaper. Uh -huh. Tory Glen Outlook, which is circulated through all the households through Tory Glen. It's done by volunteer workers, uh -huh. distributed by volunteer workers, and it gives a cross-section of views, ideas, and it helps to keep people up to date with the news of the community. Community councils are actually statutory bodies. They were established by an Act of Parliament in 1973. Their main task is to develop local involvement in the decision-making process and express the views of the local community to the local and public authorities. Community councils receive an administration grant from Glasgow District Council. They can also apply for other monies from Strathclyde Region or from the district. These monies can be used to set up premises or just to fund local projects in the area, like summer festivals. Has Ladywell Community Council been able to raise the same kind of issues as uh, Corkadilla? Community councils are able to influence decisions taken in their area. Each community council can nominate a representative to sit on their area management committee held in the city chambers, where they can discuss local matters with councillors and officials. Well, from the Ladywell and the High Street Community Council, it's been a success for us, as this has been my first year. But uh, as you know myself, the uh, majority of people in our uh, Ladywell on High Street is 95% pensioners. So just now, at the moment, we're fighting for handrails and a gate on the High Street. So the handrails is really just to help them up closes in, in the street. But we find the Area Management Committee itself a real success. Community Council representatives' influence on these committees, Rock Hill being a case in point, has led to a series of successfully concluded local campaigns. Well, the campaign has been that there was uh, no upgrading done at all over 60 years. The tenants are walking through up ankle, sometimes knee deep muck. Uh, as you can see, this, this area has had what they term total environmental upgrading, new bin stores, flagstones, uh, the railings all complete and lovely trees planted now uh, and it makes such a difference. Uh, the, the back courts and the rest of the scheme, um, they're doing a, a partial upgrade in some areas and other areas, um, it, it's, unless the money comes across, I can't see very much being done. The Garrow Hill Community Council recently campaigned against a proposal to run buses along these narrow streets. How and when did the members first find out about these proposals? Well, the Community Council has a magazine which they like to put around every two or three months. And in the magazine, they like to put in little snippets of information like train timetables and bus timetables and so on. And just prior to the deregulation of the buses, a lot of people were interested in the new timetables for the buses that would be coming out. So um, they asked. Uh, Kelvin Scottish for some timetables and in the timetables they realised that they would be running buses around these streets here. What exactly did they intend to do? They intended to run a bus from Bailston round some of these narrow streets here. You can see that there's a lot of parked cars and it makes it very difficult for a bus to get round these corners. Um, apart from any problems with pedestrians and so on being 
uh, knocked down by buses on the main streets. They actually had to mount the pavements in order to get round the corners because there were so many parked cars. This is also a bit dodgy as far as gas mains and so on are concerned. Um, the gas mains are fairly shallow in this area of Garahill and cracks possibly leading to leaks and possibly even the explosions could result from these buses being very heavy, of course. So the community council decided to campaign against these proposals. Well, we put around the petition around the main areas where the buses would be going round. Um, some people actually said that they would quite like buses, but 1,068 said they definitely did not want the buses. What effect did this result have on the bus company? Well, we wrote to the bus company and they were very, very decent with us, we must say, and they immediately withdrew the, prop the proposal to start the buses running on this area. Pollock Shields, a place of many contrasts, situated in the south side of Glasgow, has been likened to a village within the city. Within this structure, the local community council covers an area which includes a wide range of social and ethnic groups. In a thriving and ever-changing environment, modern housing blocks exist only a stone's throw away from the tranquility of Victorian villas. Over the past year, the community council has been engaged in charting these recent developments. This successful project has taken the form of a detailed local survey. Now, Sheila, can you tell us the reasons for undertaking the survey of your area? Well, Pollock Shields has a com cosmopolitan cross-section of lifestyles, uh -huh. and we felt that while we can go to the resource centre, we can get statistics of housing or population movement, we didn't have an accurate list of the commercial services that are available for the people in the district. How was the survey undertaken? I mean, how did you go about collecting all these marvellous pieces of information? Well, it was literally 16 hours of patient foot slogging around our two conservation areas. We noted every shop and we listed every premise that was lying empty. Uh -huh. We have found, to our amazement, we have 127 retailers. We have a lot of empty businesses, unfortunately, and we hope that when they become refilled, it will help uh -huh. to give a good balance to our shopping areas. Yes. We've noticed a very large number of villas have been converted into houses with special mm -hmm. need provisions or yes. educational centres. But we're very pleased that we now have a factual basis to give us some information when we're having planning meetings uh -huh. about discussions, applications and local projects. Well, my next question really was about how you see this survey helping the community. I mean, yes. do you think it really benefits the local area to have this? Well, we have found that, for example, our most useful product just now is our guide to Pollock uh -huh. Shields, which we've produced thanks to the financial grants we've had from the District Council yes. and tremendous support from the local local business people who have been marvellous. We have seen the advantages an area can enjoy from having an active community council. But how do people first become involved in the organisation? Well, there was a neighbour up in its close, Rosalind Hanlon, got in touch with us and started, wanted to try and get the community back together. As it, been, it was going uh, about five years ago. Mm -hmm. So well, she got in touch with me and says, OK, we'll have a go and we'll see if we can get it. Well, that's just going a year. So we're doing very, very well. And do you find that being on the community council is, is worthwhile? Well, it's opened my eyes really to the amount of things that the community does really. Yeah. You know, that there is an awful lot that the community does to help people. Yeah. What kind of activities are you involved in? Well, we do a lot for the old, older people. We've got things ourselves, uh, keep fit classes. Uh -huh. uh, we've got a fete coming up on the 16th of May. Plus we've got our newsletter. So it keeps the community involved in what, what is happening around the community. Yes. And do you find that you use the resource centre that's in the centre of town, I mean, where the professionals are? Well, I don't know what we'd do without <laughs> the resource centre, because uh, Pippa Lawson, she helps us an awful lot, and we don't really know in here, we get in touch with her and she provides us with information. The resource centre, which is unique in Scotland, provides advice and information on a wide range. It ensures that community councils operate in accordance with the district council scheme. Community councils can clearly be seen to have been effective in achieving benefits for their local areas. But how do the city fathers view their development? Well, I think the major contribution they've made is that they've given a section of our community a voice that they didn't have before and an official voice uh, within the 
councils of the local authorities. Uh -huh. They can have a real influence in policies. They can change directions uh, for the implementation of services that are intended for their areas. And I think that their areas have benefited as a consequence. And do you think that the district council's financial backing has influenced that? I mean, is that giving them a bit, a bit more strength and added to the voice that they already have? Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm sure it is. We give them each an administration grant of some £300 annually. Uh -huh. uh, we started off giving a total sum of £20,000 10 years ago, and that's now up to £140,000. Oh, so okay. we've been financing their activities generally and festivals and things like that, uh -huh. specific grants. So I'm sure that's made a, a, a tremendous contribution. Someone who can view the development of community councils from both sides of the fence is Councillor Archie Simpson. Before being elected to the District Council, he was a member of his local community council for six years. And now, as chairman of the district's General Purposes Subcommittee on Community Councils, what does he regard as their most important function? Well, the major and significant difference with community councils as opposed to any other voluntary organisation or even tenants association mm -hmm. is that they have statutory rights, which are recognised by this district council and other local authorities, which means they have access to information uh, that's freely and willingly given to them, mm -hmm. which is unique for voluntary organisations. And as such, it then gives them considerable authority to make statements on information and their knowledge of the local area and lands considerable credibility to their opinions which they express on behalf of the local community. Mm -hmm. So if you're interested in getting involved with your local community council and helping to try and improve things in your own local area, then why not go along to your next community council meeting? They're open to any member of the public that wants to go. Or pop into the community council's resource centre in John Street, where they'll only be too happy to give you any information that you want. It's worth it, you know. In your life, there are so many choices, so many roads, you can go the wrong way. A changing city, the city of our fathers, but we've still got to go along.